All style and no substance is a common complaint about Air France, but does it hold true? Hi there, my name is Kevin and I make honest, unsponsored, and to the point narrated trip reports about flights and hotels all over the world. This is episode 109 and today we're on board an Air France A320 going to Paris. The full experience begins in 10 seconds. Welcome to Madrid Barajas Airport, where today's trip begins. Air France uses Terminal 2, and when you talk about the best places to be at this airport, Terminal 2 is not it. But it does get the job done. If you'd like to know more about the exact fare that I paid for this flight, my next five videos in queue, or a list of all the equipment that I use on a daily basis, please check out the description below. ITA Airlines, or ITA as their call center says, is the new but not really improved Alitalia. They had a status match around a year ago, and with them I have SkyTeam Elite Plus status. Actually using that status has been a pain in the butt though, except for when flying Air France, who easily and automatically extend Sky Priority benefits with it. And so check-in was a breeze, and I was off to find the lounge. Now is the time that I usually fill with what I think is a clever transition, as I ask you to give this video a big thumbs up and subscribe if you want to see three new videos each week. Then, I'd likely invite you to check out my new Patreon in the description below, before giving you a big thanks in advance for all that you do. See what I did there? British Airways stored, I believe, four A380s in Madrid throughout the pandemic, and it really is just a strange sight to see in Spain. It was in the intro graphic, but let me just be clear that this flight was taken in April of 2022. The first lounge rejected me and a lot of people behind me because they said that it was too far away from our gate. So we made our way through what looks like the newer part of Terminal 2 to find the Puerta del Sol lounge. The lounge was nice enough, but nothing really to write home about. The apron views were really good though. And even by COVID standards, their food service precautions were just a little bit silly. Some things you could touch, some things you couldn't touch, and some things you needed to wait in line for, like a spoon. But not to worry, these practices are, of course, all out the window these days. Air France. She's quite a heavy hitter in the airline world for one specific reason. With the exception of Turkish Airlines, of all of the airlines with a single city hub, Air France has the most destinations, currently serving 205 with a fleet of 212. Compare that to the likes of United Airlines, who has the most destinations with 369, but they have eight distinct hubs with even more focus cities. It was quite the active apron as well with a constant flurry of aircraft. Heading to the gate, we had a last minute change to Echo 82, which is awkwardly above the regular part of the terminal. Our flight was delayed, but I will at least give them credit for actually announcing the delay updates as it happened. We're only talking about 40 minutes, but I feel like these days, sometimes when delays are under an hour, lots of airlines just pretend like nothing is happening. A quick look at today's stats while we board. We'd be departing due north from runway 36 right, heading up to 36,000 feet on our 96 minute journey up to Paris, where we would land just 12 minutes behind schedule. Boarding began, and here we have that awkward part of the upper gates. You have to walk down a flight of stairs in order to get to the jet bridge, which is a level below. Not a problem really, but not ideal either. Back to what I was speaking about in the intro, asking if they are all style and no substance. I do need to admit that I think Air France's branding is some of the strongest out there. Every part of the experience is distinctly French, but in a subtle and chic way. Subtle and chic until, of course, you sit in your seat and realize that you've got less than a generous 29 inches of pitch. From the front, the seats are very good looking and sleek with their dark charcoal but possibly blue vinyl with red and white headrest covers. The back of the seats, on the other hand, leaves a little bit to be desired. I do know that the holier-than-thou seat guru says that all Air France A320s have 32 inches of pitch, but there is no way that that is actually true. I'm six foot tall and was not able to comfortably sit with my knees at a 90 degree angle. 
Besides that, the seats have everything you need and not even a tiny bit more. The seats themselves though were actually pretty comfortable, especially when compared to the slimline seats that many other European carriers use. There's also a USB port in the end of each armrest. At first, I thought the seat back was splattered with mud or something, but no, it was just the material not really wearing too gracefully. When it comes to coat hooks, cup holders, and personal air vents though, it was a check, check, check. I was getting antsy to get in the air. Pushback came and we were preparing ourselves for a bit of a lengthy taxi to line up with our runway. The admittedly nothing burger of a spool up is up next. Today's route would take us up on a north-northeastern track as we made our way up to the Pyrenees Mountains and the Bay of Biscay. Seeing other aircraft while in flight never gets old for me. No matter how far away I know that they really are, they always seem just a little bit too close. After crossing the mountains and into France, we were served a snack service consisting of either a cheese or vegetable sandwich with a drink of your choice. Considering how boring you'd expect that little sandwich to be though, it was actually pretty good. We'd be approaching Paris from the west before making a UE and landing at Charles de Gaulle from the east. The crew on this flight were clearly enjoying their jobs and happy to chat away with a multitude of customers, which might be why the snack service took almost an hour, but if friendly service is the reason, I'll take it. Very, very random question, but if anyone could tell me why Iberia flies only into Orly, but Iberia Express goes into Charles de Gaulle, I'm genuinely curious to know the answer as I was considering them for this flight and was just surprised to see that it wasn't distributed the other way around. We landed and made our way to taxi to the north side of the airport to Terminal 2F, which despite its overcrowding and just lack of space in general, is one of my favorite terminals on earth. Baggage was surprisingly quick, and that is that. Let's get into the flip-flop score. 90-minute intra-European flights are never going to be the most exciting bunch as I've said before, but if they get the job done in relative comfort, then I hardly find a reason to complain about them. If I had one wish, it would have been for an extra inch or two of legroom. I hope you enjoyed this video and will give it a thumbs up and subscribe for a lot more content to come. I'll see you next time from Paris at the Canopy by Hilton Trocadero.